Hey, my name is Jess and this is the start of my new series of floral tutorials. I will be showing you how I paint my florals and I'll be documenting them in this sketchbook, which will also be given away to one lucky winner at the end of this series. Tutorial number one, I am starting with the sunflower, the flower of happiness, a brilliant way to start this series off. I'm going to start with the large centre of the sunflower. If you look closely, you can see that it's built up of three circles, a small, medium and a larger circle. And this is where all the seeds are. So it needs to be quite a large circle. My paints are watered down at the moment as this is what I call the mapping stage. It's where I can visually see the structures of the flower. And because they are watered down, I can change and adapt this at any time throughout the process. Okay, so now I'm changing my paintbrush to a more pointier brush. This is going to help when painting the petals. And as you can see, I'm just watering down a few tones of yellow. Using my fingers, I'm just measuring the centre of the sunflower. And this is going to give me the length of what my sunflower petals should be. The shape of the petals are what I refer to as a teardrop shape and I'll just be spacing these out around the centre of the flower. These will be my main petals. The petals can differ slightly as no two flowers are the same. So some can go at different angles, some can be thicker than others. Flowers are not meant to be perfect. So this is quite an open free exercise to do. And if anyone's ever watched any of my hand painting before, you know that imperfection is perfection to me. So again, with the mapping process, I'm not concentrating on colour. I'm not looking at tones at the moment. I'm purely just colour blocking each of the flower petals. What I'm showing you today can be used for most mediums. I myself, I'm using acrylic paint. But obviously you could do this with watercolours and build it up gradually or you could also do the same with oils. So now there are starting to be less gap in between the petals. This is now time to start overlapping, joining the petals on to existing petals and this is going to start creating a laid effect. You can probably see that I am actually adding some of the other tones into this part. I'm just trying to make sure I can distinguish between the petals. I can still see each teardrop shape. If anybody wants to paint alongside of me, this would be fantastic. I would absolutely love to see what you have created yourself. I do have a group called The Furniture Artist Behind the Scenes, and this is through Facebook. So if anybody wants to join that group, feel free to leave a post, a comment, and I will be holding a competition at the end of this tutorial series as well. So I'm still going around just filling in all the blank spaces now with petals, attaching them on to other petals, and even to the point where I'm just adding the tips of the petals now. This is also giving the centre of the sunflower time to dry. So after this stage, I will then cross back over and start painting onto that again. Gradually, I am now starting to see a laid effect. I can see that petals are formed upon petals and this is going to really add depth to this piece. Okay, so now the petals are completed for layer one. I'm now moving back into the centre of the sunflower. I've grabbed a smaller paintbrush again. This is going to start showing now the detail of the sunflower, which is the three inner circles, the small, medium and large. You will start to see these come to life now. And all I'm doing is a, a jotting, stippling effect just to really create those shapes. This is also going to add texture, interest and a bit of dimension to the piece. The three circles I've talked about are now clear to see. I've done this by using a dark brown and a black. And now I'm just filling in the insides with a bit more white and lighter brown. Okay, so I'm going to leave this layer to dry again and I'm moving back to the sunflower petals. 
So I'm just grabbing quite a few turns out now um, onto my colour palette. And this is because I'm going to what I call double dip. So you will notice as I paint, I very rarely dip my brush back into the water. This is because I feel that if I double dip in two, three, even four colours, this alone, when stroking it across the petal, will add so much dimension and interest to each petal. This does the work for you. I have a range of colours in this colour palette. So I've gone from yellows to yellow ochre to even browns, whites and an orange. I am conscious that when I'm selecting the colours of my paintbrush, not to do two similar colours for petals that are next to each other. This is because they'll just blend in and you won't thoroughly see the shape of that petal. So if I do one which is slightly darker, I will make sure there is a slight tonal difference, i.e. it is slightly lighter, slightly darker on the next one. I actually try not to think too much about specific colours when it comes to these petals. As you can see, sometimes I add a little bit of brown. You don't want it to be so symmetrical that it looks twee. You want it to look very realistic and, again, imperfect. So I'll speed this up slightly as I'm just making sure that each petal has its second layer and this is from the double dip process. Whilst this is drying, I'm going back to the centre and I've got an even smaller brush this time. This is now the detail stage. My mark making now is going to be more specific. In the centre of the sunflower, it is full of seeds, so I'm just making circular motions now. And I'm also adding a few more tones into it, like the green and even a bit of orange. Some of these extra added tones will just be on a specific side to the sunflower. For example, the left hand side, it doesn't have to go all the way around. This is what creates that interest, that individuality. No two sunflowers that you paint will be the same. And that is what makes one of a kind art. Okay, so you can just keep adding as much or as little as you want to that centre. To me, that is now completed. What I'm going to do now is I'm just extending each of those petals with that teardrop shape into the centre. I'm doing this just by mixing a white and a yellow together because this has to cover the dark centre. Yet we'll also need to blend in. What I found as I was painting these little bits in was that the centre of the sunflower was still slightly wet. This actually worked to my advantage as, as you can see now, I was starting to drag what was on my paintbrush, parts of the brown, back up the sunflower. This is really tying in the petals and the centre of the sunflower in lovely, again adding depth and dimension to the piece. So once they're all completed, I'm now moving back onto the petals. Again, I'm just trying to follow the contour of each petal. I'm using various different tones. I'm even creating texture by dry brushing the paint onto the petals. This is where, again, you don't add any more water to your paintbrush. You just drag the paintbrush, the paint, across the petal following the lines, the curves. And then you will see a texture where the paint is starting to run out. This again adds so much beautiful detail to each petal. So once you are happy with the tones of the petals, it's now time to define the layers of the petals. And to do this, I'm just adding like a dark brown just to the sides of some of the petals. And predominantly the ones on the top, as these are the main focus petals. This technique is creating almost like a shadow effect, trying to make the flower look more 3D. I'm also using what is left of that brown colour on my paintbrush, and I'm just going to drag this over some of the petals again, adding more of that dry brush texture. 
Again, you can add as much as you want, add as little as you want. There is no wrong answer. You can just stop when you're happy with what you've done. For me, that is now. All I'm going to do now as my very top layer is I'm using metallic paints. Again, this is your choice if you want to do this. I just find that, especially on furniture, when as a light catches it in a certain way, it just adds such a beautiful glow to specific areas of the flowers. In this case, I'm just using a metallic yellow, a copper, a Aztec gold and a normal gold. And these again, I can highlight certain areas, accent the detail. It's just such a beautiful finish. And I would say this is probably a really fun part of the painting process too. I will show you the effect of the metallic paints onto this painting at the end of this video. Again, I'm just using multiple metallic paints all in one go. And I'm just following the contour of the petals again. Okay, so I'm happy with that now. I'm just going to move on to the stem and some of the leaves. This would be the mapping process again. I'm just using multiple tones of green and I'm just creating my structure. Now on to the leaves. Again, I'm just mapping out the shapes of the leaves that I want. So we'll be overlapping, some won't be. I'm using a variety of different sizes. And again, I'm just colour blocking these in at the moment. Visually, I think it needs just a few more leaves. So I will add these on as well. Back to double dipping the paints. Here you can see there's created lots of tones onto those leaves. And I'm making sure to follow the contour of the leaves. This is giving it its structure. I'll darken some of the areas, creating some shadows and some highlights. And as you can see now, I'm just adding in a little bit more of the detail, the stems to each of the leaves. And this is it. You can see all that lovely detailing there on the centre of the sunflower and all that texture on the petals. Some of you might like to leave it here and that's great. Others, if you're like me, I always love a little bit of linear detailing. Now it's time to grab the water resistant pens, the fade proof pens. This is quite a thick pen. And again, I'm just adding those circular motions in, just highlighting a bit more detail to the sunflower. You can be as free as you want with the detailing. I again, don't try to think too much about it. I just go with the flow and keep it a constant rhythm. I will swap between my pens, a thicker and thinner pen. Again, this will add more depth, more texture to the piece. I'm using the thicker pen on the top petals, again, just to emphasise the shape and structure. I find that this can refine the shape of the petals a bit more and I can slightly tweak them. I have now swapped to my thinner pen and I'm just concentrating on the tips of each of the petals. Again, the lines don't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be flush against the petals. Sometimes I leave gaps, sometimes I overline. This just makes it quirky and adds to the beauty of the flower. I'm even adding a few more lines to the top petals again, making them the focus point. You could also go along and do this with a white gel pen, for example, and add some highlighted areas too. And lastly, I'm just redefining the stem and the leaves, and I'm just going to add in that extra bit of detail as you can see, I'm making sure not to be perfect. All my lines are slightly crinkly, a little bit wonky. Typical of a leaf structure. And there we have it. This is basically the end of the painting tutorial. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Check out that gorgeous detailing and look at that glow.
that is down to the metallic paints. It just adds that little something extra. So that is the end of my first floral painting tutorial. I would love for you to leave me any feedback and how I can improve. And again, I would love to see if you've given it a go. If there's a specific flower you would like me to paint, then pop that in the comments. Other than that, thank you so much for watching.